Today, I would like to do a practice where we connect with the idea of spirit guides. So, connecting with spirit guides is a, you know, and then after I want to go into the 12 tribes as patriarchs, but connecting with spirit guides is the sense of connecting with those you might want to invite to a meal at your house, you want to make them feel great because it's like an honor to have them around, but also that it benefits them because the same way the ancestors want us to live out their desire for their lineage, their code to go on, the same way spiritually the guide wants the code to more of them, what they represent in the world. So we connect with them, we like connect with that code in the oneness of all. And I'm inspired by kind of like from the top to the bottom, we have to allow the whole breadth of a cross and inside and outside every direction. And then I also like even have a few I'm going to bring in that are close to me here in the physical world that I met. And then some not from the Jewish lineage. Um, and then going into the tribe. So first it's kind of like a meditation. So you're welcome to close your eyes and I'll just kind of like bring you to the soles of your feet And there's so much information, even if there's not much sensation, or there is. There's a weight in the feet, like a magnet to the earth. And starting to recognize in the space that there is a, a trust already from the heart, that there's help available and that it's worth it. And there's like all this work done, let's conserve energy and be humble and know our place. And so first we start from like, what are we willing to start letting go of more? So where do we need guidance? For me, it's like, this tendency instead of working on my own sense of like, I, I see the stinginess in me, this narcissistic kind of selfishness of wanting so badly to be like so great to somebody and how it pans out into disappointment and unmet expectations and it's like wearing this role for a little bit and finding some suit that doesn't fit so comfortable and it's too tight and you need some guidance and Bring in Shmuel Hanavi. We don't necessarily need to see anyone's face. Just bring in these by their titles, by their names, what they represent. Alta Rebbe. Sarah. Rachel. David Hamelech. Lubavitch or Rebbe. Rebbe Nachman of Breslov. 
breathing in the nectar of these guys. I'm going to keep going on, just allowing each one to come in and fade away. They don't need to stay long, just a little tag, just a little touch, just a conscious connection of barely merging and then sort of like, like sliding across each other's awareness and then the next and like as we're turning a new one's coming and turning and a new one's coming so it's not like we have to get attached they're teaching us about detachment this is unconditional love we're practicing to receive from those who came before who practice whatever it is right who practice for example with me what I'm trying to do which is sliver off that tithe of devoting my desire that I want for myself, for the creator, for the light, for the good of all, for the for God's children, for those who made the community I live in possible, for the ones who came before me, for my family, right? So let me continue. So connect with, connect with, connect with the, what it represents for you. Joseph. Esther, Shlomo, Chafetz Chaim, the Yudik Rebbe, Abraham. Yitzchak, Pinchas, Ruth, Nadav and Avihu. I can't remember if I said Aaron. If I didn't, I'm saying it now. If I did, then. I'll continue by saying the next one again, just in case I'm going backwards. Pinchas, Ruth, Nadav and Avihu, Orchaim, Saul. Arizal, Balshemto, Eliyahu Hanavi, Rivka, Leah. Judah, Moshe, Dina, Devorah, Miriam, Nachshon ben Aminadab, Mitchell Rabba. It was just this past weekend his uh, birthday and death on the same day, and then the next day his liberation from prison. They had groups of 50 come and order from him while he was in jail because of how he spouted off truth, facts flowing, just streams of consciousness. So nourishing for them and he had so much he had to offer he couldn't hold back he like 
and a fountain wellspring. Revits and Shana, his wife. Magi. The tall dot. The Magid of Mezrich was a teacher of some of I, the, those I've mentioned, including the next, Reb Zusha. Rebbetzin Chaim Mushka. Mordechai. Yaakov. Esav. Yehoshua, or as some turned in a different time frame and a different mixture of ideas said Jesus. I can't negate that it's so prevalent that people like the word. Ashmedeus. And the Rayal, which I believe uh, is the Lubavitcher of his brother. Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev, Kedusha Slavi. Yisachar, Piyajeshna Rebbe and it doesn't only have to be people I'm going to stop there Rev Cook I'll add um Ega Machana Ephraim and the uh, the Maharal and Maimonides. You can also connect with the prophets, right? So you could say uh, Malachi, Joel, Zechariah, Jonah, Hosea, Avakuk. I'm just letting these associations come in. I 
Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, I think this is the Fania. And then there's some not Jewish teachers like Swami Sachidananda is an example of a guru. You have the Falun Dafa, which is a type of Taoist uh, Buddhist lineage. You have JP Vaswani, a guru. You have Muji, a Caribbean guru. You have the, you know. And then it also can be people that have been like parents in your life who have just given you unconditional love. We have, I'm thinking of people in my life. I'm thinking of Michelle, Jonathan, Avi Hill, David Schwecki, Reverend David Ingber, Cheryl Waba, Yaakov Kirsch, Neely Weissman, Michael Payne, Michael Yabar Yehuda, Rochelle Pachman. These are people who I've met on the way just coming to mind when I'm doing this. And now... I'm gonna, now it's gonna be kind of informational. We're gonna move in now that we're open to like receive. From so many. Wisdom connections and integration. So we have North, South, East, West, and there's 12 tribes. I'm gonna go through them like this first. So. You're welcome to pause and take notes. This is from many different sources um, over the years. So you don't have to take my word for it. And you're welcome to do your own research. It's from a lot of places mixed together. North is Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. East is Judah. East, this is when they were... Um, moving. East is Judah, Issachar, and Zvulan. West is Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. South is Reuven, Shimon, and Gad. Levi is in the center. West is Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. East is Judah, Issachar, Zvulan. North is Dan, Asher, and Tali. And then it's like this collective hypercube. We have all of the tribes in us. I'm going to go through the zodiac a little. So, Yosef, which is Menashe and Ephraim. Um, and I'm going to say the birth order now. So, the order that the tribes are usually listed is the order by first Leah, who is the first wife, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Issachar, and Zvulan. And then Dan and Naphtali are from Rachel's handmaid, Bilha. Then God and Asher from Leah's handmaid, Zilpa. Then Yosef and Benjamin from Rachel. And Dina is mentioned as another child. But not as one of the tribes. And she was very curious about looking at the women that were not of her culture. And when she was in the womb, her mother, Leah, knew that she was going to have a son and prayed to, for it to be turned into a daughter because she would have had the 11th son and there was going to be 12 tribes. And Rachel was only going to then have one son, less than even the handmaids. 
So they had prayed that it should be a girl, and it turned into a girl, and then Dina would go out and look at these other cultures. She had a, a streak in her. And then this prince saw her, seduced her, humiliated her in a way, hated her that he she had power over him to make him obsess and grab her and not want anyone else to have her ever again and need, need her, need her. And he sent his father then to go ask for a hand in marriage from her family when they found out what happened. He said, only if you become circumcised could you do rulings. But then two of the brothers, Shimon and Levi, went and killed all the males of the city of Shechem, named after this prince, on the third day of their healing from their circumcision. Like I talked earlier about the circumcising of the heart, of the desires to want to give the energy to a higher cause, we need guidance. So, Levi gets the tide of the others in the middle. And we have, um, the actual birth order is Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Dun, Naphtali, Gad, Asher. Issachar, Zvulan, Dina, Yosef, and Binyamin. Reuven is Cancer, Thomas, Ches, the letter Ches, the right hand, the moon, and the crown. Shimon is the Leo, Av, the lion, the letter Tes, the left kidney, the sun. Yehuda is Aries, Nisan, the letter He, the right foot, Mars, and the Lamb. Issachar is the Taurus, Er, Ox, Vav, right kidney, Venus. Zavulan is Gemini, Sivan, Zion, letter Zion, left foot, twins, Mercury. Dun is Capricorn, Teves, Ion, liver, Ion, the letter Ion, liver, the liver, Saturn, goat. Naphtali is Pisces, Adar, the month Adar, the letter Kuf, fish, and then Jupiter and Neptune, and spleen. Yosef, um, oh sorry, God is Elul, Virgo, Virgin, Yud, left hand, Mercury. Asher is Aquarius, Shvat, the letter Tzadik, Stomach, and Esophagus. Yosef as Ephraim, because he has two sons, is Libra, Tishrei, Scales, the letter Lamed, Brain, and Venus. Um, Yosef as Menasha is Scorpio, Cheshvan, Nun,
who had her name, intestines, and Mars. And finally, Binyamin is Sagittarius, Kislev, Belly, Jupiter, Samach, the letter, and a bow. And then there's a book called, or a reference, really, like a document, um, called the... Twelve Patriarchs, the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, and um, Reuven is, and it's something to learn from each of them. So Reuven is because with Bilha, we remove. He he teaches us remove lustfulness. He watched. There's some interpretations that he moved his father's bed to her, her tent after Rachel died, and he moved his father's. Tent, uh, bed to his to his mother's tent, even though his mother, even though he, even though Yaakov moved his bed to Rachel's handmaid's tent after Rachel died. So, um, right after having Binyamin as a baby, the final tribe. So there's another interpretation that he was romantically with her. And so it's about removing lustfulness. He watches her bathe and then rapes her when she's drunk, kind of like David with Bathsheba, but not exactly. Shimon is jealousy of Joseph. War against Levi and his kids did um, miscegenation. I'm trying to think of the right way to say that word. Um, it's also referred to as interbreeding, but um, I'm trying to think of a political... Basically, different races. Levi is arrogance and descendants leads to corruption in heaven. Gets um, eternal priesthood and Levi opposed the Shem circumcision for, Dina, for, for Dina from the start. So Shimon... Um, got him to be involved, but it wasn't really what he wanted. Then Yehuda, criticized for being with non-Israelite and with um, Tamar, his daughter-in-law, pretending to be a prostitute when he was drunk and bribed his wife's father um, to be able to marry her. He's courage, monetary greed, and bravery with beast, the military. Yisachar is ascetism, like, uh, you know, the monks, the nuns, the ones that abstain and um, follow a very humble, non-indulgent, non-sensual pursuit, and um, it's a simple, godly, agricultural life. Zavulan is the inventor, the philanthropist, not aware, um, sinned other than in thought, um, brought physical blessing to his father. His iniquity was covenanting with his brothers against Joseph to avoid being slain.
Dan is it's about anger, jealousy of Joseph, blindness from anger, and mind disturbances. The Lord departs and Beliar inhabits, and is which is what happens when you lose your mind um, when you're angry, and um, saved by a lady, a lady Judah savior, and um, then inter like an interceding angel. Naphtali is the theme of sexual relation. Joseph seizes um, a bull and rides on it. His visions. Um, the Levi is the sun and Judah is the moon. And then God first hates Joseph but chooses love. And it's about warriors. He can cut a body into, three, into a third and kills it with one blow. Um, it's about strength. Asher is like... Um, oil, women, beauty, following the truth with um, singleness of faith. Yosef is chastity, resisted um, Potiphar's wife, despite her seductions, flattery, torture, her planning to kill herself, her husband, threats, love potions. And finally, Binyamin is, he exhorts descendants against deceit and fornication. Hope that you appreciated this session. Um, we got to do a practice and also a lot of good information on our lineage. Looking forward to tomorrow to some interesting topics regarding the left emanation. This is going to be Kabbalistic, very deep material. If it's not tomorrow, it'll be in two days. I may want to do some prompts tomorrow.